Wait, what's happening? Oh no, please don't destroy my ship, no. This is Lens Island, an action-adventure indie game that's still currently in early access. This game is a open-world survival game that lets you experience your own path. Whether it's building the most beautiful or most secure base ever, to taking care of your plants and selling them back to the townspeople. Townspeople? Is that even a word? Anyway, looking for some action? Explore the mysteries of the island and darkness underneath. Mine precious gems, find hidden secrets and battle your way through dark and scary dungeons. Your island, your choice. This game offers a lot, so I wanted to experience this over the next 100 days. And without further interruptions, leave a sub and I played 100 days of Lens Island. I started by creating my world. Josh for the reference. Also, I was hoping for some shoes. Anyway, I woke up on the island next to a box to start day one of survival. Immediately, I chose violence. I opened the box to learn a bunch of helpful stuff, but instead I looked at the pictures and didn't even realize the small print. I then spent good five minutes trying to figure out how to equip a knife that was already equipped. I eventually realized it's already equipped and went to gather some wood. You think I read the part where it says deal bonus damage for hitting crit circles? Yeah, about that. I will learn that later. I ventured on to gather wood and other resources I could find. Come on bro, leave the box alone. I then started exploring the island and found a smaller island next to the big one, where I finally started reading the tooltips. I discovered this monolith, which I have no idea what it's for or how to activate it, so I continued gathering materials. Until I reached this fence with the entrance being blocked by a car. I thought someone either doesn't want me to go explore further, or someone needs help. So obviously I had to go see what's up. I hopped over the cart and ended up in a small town called Bridgewater. It looked deserted, but there was music coming out of the inn, so I went to have a look. This is where I met Kevin and Step. They didn't say much, so I went on to check the notice board for any jobs instead. This is where I learned I can upgrade the town and will have new shops, a higher buy and sell ratio, and, most important, two new house plots. I'll go over that in just a bit. I then spoke to the mayor and asked him what this place is. He basically told me if I'm planning to settle on this island, I have to watch out for the darkness that lurks beneath. I mean, there is an easy fix, right? Don't go underneath? And also, if I donate building supplies to the notice board, I will help rebuild the town and provide more housing for the citizens to move in. I mean, I don't even have a house for myself. Where's my house, dude, huh? After the meeting with the mayor, I continued exploring the island and gathering any materials on the way for my own house. That was until I got lost and ended up in a dark forest looking place. This is where I met my first enemy. These small things, I don't know what to call them yet, but they are quite easy to deal with. There are also these dark nests where the small things spawn from, so destroying them is sort of a priority. After clearing the last of the small things, I rolled into a cave, where I've done a big nope and went back outside. I made a smart choice and decided to start building my first own house. I found this nice place next to my own private lake and started building the foundations. I built a 2x2 which was going to be enough for my first home and started building the walls. Bam, I was out of wood. Oh no, what can I do? Lucky there is like 1 million trees around me. So I started chopping. And now my house was complete. I built a bed and a workbench. A bed obviously lets you sleep at night so you have less scary world to play in. A workbench lets you craft a bunch of tools, weapons like torch, fishing pole or a sword. There are different tiers of weapons and tools which can be unlocked. This means they are going to have better stats but also gonna cost more materials to craft them. By crafting bed and a workbench I unlocked a bunch of new blueprints like refinery, toolbox and the one that caught my attention was a wood frame farm. I can grow my own food right here. Perfect. Have a guess what I've done next. Yep, I went around the island to gather materials. Once I gathered enough, I built two farming plots and water well to water the plants. Only problem I had was I couldn't transport the water from the well to the farms without the watering can. And to craft it, I need iron sharks, which I have none. I searched everywhere on the island for hours, but no luck. 
I then had the idea I can probably find it on a different island, so I switched my focus on upgrading the town and gathering materials. I found some crabs on the beach, but I couldn't catch them for my dinner sadly. As I was gathering materials to upgrade my town, I came across these glowing doors. Upon activating the doors, it gave me two coordinates on my map to, I guess, open it? Hmm, I'm wondering what's hiding behind them. I also found this big ball with five pillars and some symbols. But I had no idea what to do yet. After gathering all the materials for the town, I rushed to the mayor to upgrade. The next town upgrade is a mining town. Wait, does this mean I'll be getting resources for free? Oh yes, please. Also, I'll get a farmer and a pirate. Yar! I have a small problem though. For the next town upgrade, I need 150 wood and rocks, but I can only carry 100. To fix that problem, I need 30 coins to upgrade my backpack space to 200. Easier said than done, I have zero coins. Hmm. I then tried to steal some plants, but the town knows me already. Running out of options, I decided it would be the best to go explore the landmarks which the glowing doors gave me. The first was the monolith on the small island I found at the beginning. And to my surprise, the first cave that I found before is where the second map coordinates was. So it was time for an adventure. As I entered the cave, I was super excited to explore this cave. And then this happened. Yeah, I lasted about 3 seconds. Thank you game, thank you for being so friendly to noobs. I then fought of another monster and mined a bunch of coal nodes. Further down the cave, I found a glowing monolith, which I could activate. Now that both of the monoliths activated, the big doors is going to open. I found this node which looks different to the coal nodes, so I started mining. How long does this take to mine? And finally I found iron charts. Yes, I can build new stuff and now I know how to get more. By exploring the caves. This cave was small, so I just collected all the resources and left to my base. As I got home, I went to bed to start a new day. I first built a watering can so I can finally water my plants and a torch so I can explore dark caves. And also that this doesn't happen again. I then grabbed the watering can and the torch from the local toolbox, collected some water from the well and finally watered my plants so they can grow into delicious fruits. I then built a toolbox in my base so I don't have to run to the one on the starting point. I then took my fishing pole out, which I've also unlocked and used it to practice my fishing. And grabbed myself a dinner. It took me a while to learn how to actually catch a fish, but eventually I noticed to hit the white circles and avoid the red ones. I then chopped down some trees and built myself a campfire in order to cook my fish that I just caught. And the end result was beautiful, a full stomach. And now I was ready to explore the cave that I've just unlocked. Thinking of it now, I should probably make the sword instead of the fishing pole. I unlocked the doors and headed inside to explore. As I started exploring the cave, I was mining all the nodes I came across and destroyed every box and barrel for loot. I repaired the bridge and then realized the sheer size of this cave. I could go left, right, up, down, there's so many ways to go. This is gonna take long. I wanted to explore all the parts and get all the resources, but first I had to go deposit resources from my backpack, as I was full. I also made some food as my guy eats a lot. Back in the cave, I first went up and found a bunch of monsters and iron shards. I then went right and found more resources. Eventually I explored all possible paths and came across a broken bridge. I couldn't repair it, so I took the only possible unexplored way I could. I can now see each cave the monsters are getting stronger and stronger and these new ones even have a dodge ability. I'm worried now what's gonna wait for me in the next cave. Exploring this cave was definitely an eye opener. It's dark and it gives you very dangerous vibes. Probably not a good idea to explore this in a dark room. So I continued venturing on in the cave, fighting monsters and gathering materials. And fighting monsters. Shall I just jump? Until I came across some structures with blue glowing lights. Instead of talking of what happens next, this is my live reaction commentary. Enjoy. Yeah, Dark Souls Arena, definitely. I see multiple spawners. Oh, new, new, new enemy. Uh, I'll call you. I'll call you. Fast big boy. Two big boys, two of them, really, bro? Really? Wait, what? 
they're strong. Shit. <laughs> um, um, I might be dead here, actually. What? They have range attacks? Are you serious? No, no, no. This is not on. This is not on. Um, uh, okay. Uh, dodge. Uh, run. I need to kill this bonus real quick. Um, there's so many of them already. Oh, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. No, no, no. Oh, range attacks. Dodge. Why am I doing 10 damage? I Oh no, this is not good. This is not good. Oh no. Uh, dodge. Oh shit. Run, run, run. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. One down. One down. I can do this. No! Please. No. I can do this. I can still do this. It's easy. Just dodge. Yes. Okay. I can do this. Oh, oh this is easy now. Okay, perfect. No! No, no, no! Oh my god, one hit, one hit, and I'm dead. I'm, I'm actually dead. I'm actually dead. I'm actually dead. No. Dodge! Oh, you... uh, I need a sword. I actually need a sword. This is impossible with this dagger. You know what? Since I'm in the base, uh, let me craft the sword real quick. Yep. Uh, equip it. More damage, perfect. No, why would... Perfect. I think that's much better than the dagger. Yeah, fuck the dagger. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, here we are. Uh, round two, I guess. Um, what's the tactic? Just charge. Okay, let's focus the bonus first. No, dodge. Oh, I hate that they have range attacks. What is this? Oh, this, this is nice. I can two shot the small ones now. I need to focus the big boys. Okay, one down. One more to go. Come on. Die! Yeah. Yes! Okay, now this is easy. Oh, I should have built a sword. This is so much easier now. Just two shot them. Yeah, two shotting them is so easy right now. It's, I was sweating the last time. This is just easy now. Okay, lesson learned. Every new cave, I need to upgrade my tools and weapons. Okay. Let me finish this off. And... Uh, that's it. GG. That was easy. Easy. Well, that was much easier with the normal sword. I then found Jarek, the blacksmith, hiding at the end of the cave. What a coward. Didn't even help. After speaking to him, he promised to give me a good deal for saving his ass. I told him I'll hold him to that. I gathered what resources were left and continued to the end of the cave, where I unlocked something and warped out of the cave. I then went into the town and built a premium house for the blacksmith. I definitely want that discount. I also built another house for Steph, where I moved her in and went back to my base to relax and sleep so I'm ready for the next day's worth of adventure. The next day I woke up. I was ready for some action. I first upgraded my workbench to level 2, as I had enough of materials, and unlocked most of the level 2 tier weapons and tools. I also built an axe and a pickaxe. I tested each of the weapons, but felt like the hammer and the spear are a bit weaker compared to the sword. I then found a wooden raft in my backpack blueprints, to aid me in my sea adventures, so I made it my priority. After gathering all the wood, I built my seaworthy ship. The small ship has a toolbox on board, which was a nice touch, in case I decided to change weapons mid-journey or far away from my island. Before leaving for an adventure, I caught some fish and made them into meals. And I was ready to become an explorer. I set course for the only mark I had on my map and was on the way. I tried running over a barrel in water and realized that it will get destroyed by the ship and the resources will go to you. Nice! Once I reached the island, I started exploring and gathering anything that I could. Especially plants like roses and the purple ones because they sell for a lot. I then came across another door and mobs guarding it. I cleared the mobs and spawners near the doors and continued exploring the island before activating. I found this destroyed or unfinished watchtower and a couple of houses. I wonder if they were left here for me to continue building on them, or it's just abandoned because of the dark monsters. Hmm. Upon activating the doors, I received another free coordinates for me to activate before these doors are going to open. You know what that means? 
more cave exploration. I didn't waste no time and sailed to the coordinates and hopped into the cave. It was just like another cave I've explored. Darkness, bunch of monsters and spawners, getting lost because the cave has too many ways to explore, coal and iron nodes for mining, bigger mobs being thrown into the combination, abandoned buildings inside the cave, and getting lost because the cave has too many ways to explore. And eventually I explored all the parts in a cave and found the monolith that I have to activate. I gathered last of the resources and activated the symbol. You know what's not funny? Once you explore the cave, you have to make it all the way to the entrance. Yep. Help. As I was nearby to my house, I made a quick stop at my base. I first expanded my farm a little bit and built a smelter so I could make hard steel for the next upgrade of the workbench. I've also built a fireplace which lets you cook but I have no idea how to do that yet. I made enough of steel bars to upgrade my bench to level 3 and hopefully be able to craft a new sword. But I need another 3 bars to unlock the sword. So I spent a couple of days using the refiner and smelter to make bars and gathered any materials I might need. And after a lot of work I had rare hardened steel sword. With a new sword, a new set of confidence arrived, and I was ready to explore more caves. I hopped onto my raft, or ship, whichever you prefer, and headed to the next island. I explored the island, cleared the mobs guarding the cave, and headed inside. Wait, pause. Don't get me wrong. These caves are extremely fun and scary to explore, but I'll just summarize them for your convenience. I mean, if you want one hour of cave exploration, just hit me up in the comments. And pause. Anyway, there was a lot of mining nodes in this cave, as well as abandoned buildings you can actually go inside. Nice touch. I took a swim in the water and found a rare fish that I couldn't catch because my fishing pole is on vacation. Now, speaking of enemies, there are a lot of them as well. And I found a new enemy. This little thing has an electric breath. Nice. Oh yeah, they can also explode. Eventually, I found this treehouse looking thing and found a monolith. After the activation, I headed back outside. Since I have time till I get back out of the cave, I shall talk about the talents a little bit since I haven't mentioned them yet. So there are six different talent ways you can choose to go. Crit damage, weapon damage, attack speed, health, resource damage, as in mining and chopping power, and weapon and tool slots. Each of the spec ways also has a last talent which gives you an insane passive ability. Like the weapon damage one for example. Gives you every 7th hit 50% more base damage. That's crazy. The one thing I like is how you can mix and match the talents and don't have to spend all the talents in one way. You can spread it around like me. I don't know if that's the best tactic but hey. And that's all the time we get for talent talk. As I go out of the cave I hopped into my ship and headed back to my base. I expanded my farming plots again and also build a vertical framework to hang my fruits that prefer hanging. With that completed I hopped into my raft again and headed to the last landmark for the last cave. As I got to the coordinates I arrived at a very small island with no warm welcome from the monsters. I done a quick lap around the island to see if there are any hidden treasures but didn't find anything worth mentioning. And now it was time to explore the cave. The Forgotten Town Story As I entered the dark cave I could feel danger lurking around. I stepped on the suspicious button and almost lost my life. Instead, I went around and got myself in a bit of a battle with the monsters. They didn't stand a chance against the swipe swipe of my sword. I continued exploring the cave and raided the houses as the monsters now learn how to occupy the houses too. A couple of jumps later and I met more enemies. I found my beloved monolith that I activated the end. I'm so sorry. I hopped out of the cave and was ready to go home. Oh no, I hate rain. What a perfect time to do some fishing. Once I arrived at my base, I decided to do some gardening and focus on making upgraded version of the pickaxe and the axe before heading into the now open cave. As I reached the cave, I cleared the monsters that were door camping and practiced my spear fighting a little before entering. As I entered the cave, something was different. I'm not talking about the cave itself, but I had a feeling. The cave was super fun to explore, plenty of monsters to go around, and I can definitely see the difficulty of the cave speaking up as well. Yeah, I'm done with the spear. Much better. 
I continued on finding monsters and exploring the dark paths deeper and deeper into the cave. What's up with the house monsters? As I reached a bridge that needed to be repaired, I came across another death button and hopped into another arena not knowing what to expect. Really? Just 5 monsters? After winning the arena, I was rewarded with the forged shield. Nice. I'm yet to use shields, but the reason why I don't is because they slow you down a lot. But in return, they give you major defensive benefits. I continued in the exploration and came across a broken lift. Yeah, that takes you outside of the cave. I found this viewing platform, which gave me an idea of how big the cave actually is. And I knew where I had to go. Yeah, definitely not this way though. Yay, another arena! Watch your step? What do you mean? And things got crazy. Not only there were so many spawners, I also had to watch for the traps on the floor as I didn't want arrows to the knees. I eventually killed all the monsters with the help of the traps and continued further into the cave. I think it's time for another live reaction, don't you think? Okay, let's continue. Um, so, this bag, fuck this bag. Oh, I see some mushrooms. Uh, let's get the mushrooms, shall we? Ah, uh, nice. Oh, whoa, 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 No, 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 no. No, no, no. Abort mission. Abort mission. Void boar. What? Wait, what? I'm not prepared to fight. Like, can I, can I leave? Okay, let's see. Let's see how big this is. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't do this. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I wasn't prepared for a boss fight. Okay, uh, one, two. You know what? This boss is not too bad, actually. It's just... Okay. It's just doing the same attacks as the small ones, I guess. I guess this is the bigger version. Whoa, wait, what? He's got the electric breath. Oh, I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed right now. What? He's got this as well? How am I supposed to dodge this? Oh my god. I'm actually dead. No, this is not good. Ah, so close. Um, this is not good. Well, I got him out for Dodge. No, I don't know. Oh, I still got hit. I got hit twice. I don't know how can I dodge this. I'm running out of shrooms. Oh, Pillar, you saved my life. I was about to get hit over there. No, don't pickaxe him. Why, why do I have a pick? Oh, this is not good. This is not good. I need new fruits. Uh, yeah, let's blueberries. Okay. Eat. Shove it down your throat. Okay, okay, a breather. Oh no, he's back. Shit. I hate it. I don't know how to dodge this. Do I have to dodge into it? Okay, I'm gonna try the next time. Oh. Let's see. Oh, I didn't think that. Yeah, I ran into this. Fuck. I ran into his breath. Dodge. Okay, good. Come here. Oh, no. It's 25 damage every time I get hit. How does he hit me from there? Are you serious? Come on. Save me. The pillar is the MVP. Okay, let's heal up. I can do this. I can do this. Just come on. Two more hits. No. Oh yeah, hit me with the yeah. Sniper over here. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. I was not ready for this. I didn't know there was bosses in this game. Now I know, I guess. Heart rate is like over 200. I'm not gonna lie, this boss was tough. I wasn't even expecting a boss fight yet, but I'm glad it's over. After defeating the Void Bear, I looted the rest of the boxes and headed to the end to grab the glowing thingy and warp out of the cave. I chopped down some trees for the town upgrade and headed back to my base to recollect of what just happened. Back in my base, I took care of my plants and went around the island to gather last resources for the next town upgrade. I eventually upgraded the town 
and went to check out the new mining outpost. Nice, free resources. I built a house for my pirate friend and the other one for the farmer, which will supply me with seeds and fruits. Upon checking the town board, I noticed I need 450 materials for the next upgrade. I also need about 500 gold coins for the bug upgrade. Yeah, this is gonna take ages. As I was doing some work around the base, I had a great idea on how to make 500 coins quickly for the next bug. So hear me out. Since I housed a pirate on the island, he now lets me play blackjack with him for money. I first need to test this out. Okay, so I get jack and a 10. That's a good start. Let's see what he gets. Wait, what? This is rigged. Okay, I need a different way to make money. Fine, I'll just make money the normal way. I started by building more farming plots and further upgrading my workbench to level 3. To level 3? I've also unlocked a more advanced ship, which I rushed to build. I couldn't wait to take the ship out for a spin. What better way to do it than explore the next map's location? I used the water current and was there in no time. This ship is very fast. On this island I learned three new things. I discovered a spawner that cannot be destroyed. I discovered where titanium, limestone and other resources can be mined without having to go into a cave. And lastly, I met a new enemy. And I tell you what, I almost lost that battle. This is the first time I had to use a shield. I then went around collecting all the resources I could find, fought all the monsters as I went on and took a shower after a very long time. I then activated the doors which gave me another free landmarks to go visit. Why are they so far, huh? With new tasks to complete, I left the island and headed back home. I got distracted. As I was going back, I found this island. Why is this island so special? Well, I found this destroyed or unfinished building with a bunch of farming plots already here, which gave me the best idea yet. I knew I had to move out, as my base was getting a little too small now, and this was the most perfect location for a new base. I had to first test out if I can delete buildings that are already built on an island before I can start my big renovation. And so I marked this island and headed back to my base. There is a lot of work that has to be done. The next day I woke up. I started by harvesting what plants are ready to be collected. One thing I noticed, that farming is starting to take longer and longer as I have 10 farming plots now. Plus any of the hanging plants. Anyway, once the farming was complete, I really wanted to build a level 4 workbench, but I had two issues. I need 3 titanium bars and hardwood. To your surprise, this late in the game I still haven't collected any of the wood, but let's not get into that. Now the pure titanium bar problem was a little bit easier, as the last island that I've visited had both titanium ore and limestone. I just wasn't sure if I had enough, so I started smelting. As I had to wait for the bars, I made a quick stop to sell off any plants that I had, and I bought a treasure map. No, I didn't play no blackjack. As my titanium bars were still smelting, I decided to go to the next island as there are probably gonna be more materials I might need outside. I first cleared all the mobs on the island and I was correct, I grabbed a bunch of limestone and titanium ore. Now I wanted to go inside the cave as well, but my dark essence storage was full and considering there are going to be a lot of monsters in the cave, I thought it would be perfect time to finally learn what I can actually do with the essences. I still had no clue. As I was going back to my base to figure this out, I had another crazy thought. I remembered the island of one of the first caves that I visited had big dark trees on them. So I fully stacked my backpack with some hardwood and headed back to my base. I got back to my island and needed the last bar before I could upgrade my workbench to level 4. So I just waited. Patiently. Finally. So I upgraded level 4 workbench and unlocked another tier of weapons and tools. This titanium sword looks so good. I only need 3 bars as well. Can't wait. Now I only had one problem. The dark essence. I found a void chest in the blueprints that I could build and it costs 100 of the dark essences. But I need 10 steel bars. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I then spent the whole day and night looking through the town to do something with the essences. But every house was empty and none of the current citizens wanted to buy any dark essence. 
I lost all hope and was about to give up. But as I checked through the town one last time, BAM! Here she was. I guess it makes sense, since it's dark essences I'm trying to sell. And finally, I was ready to go explore the next cave. I didn't waste no time and hopped into my ship. With the wind on my side, I was in the location in no time. As I entered the cave, I had my warm welcome I always wanted. Wait, are those homing missiles? Wait, why is it so bright in here? I'm not complaining. Wait, why are there so many of you, huh? Wait, why lava? I already know I'm going to fall in lava at some point in this video. Wait, what? I can't mine this? Wait, I think I might be dead here. Wait, my ship is too far. Wait, wait. Floor falling? Really? Nice. Wait, I need to activate this. In the next episode. Back on my island, I had to shift my focus from making a sword into making a pickaxe. As I've just discovered a new node that I need a better pickaxe to mine. Once I crafted the pickaxe, it was time for the next island and the cave. In the next episode of Island Exploration. This island was peaceful as ever, plus I couldn't see much because of the sandstorm. With the limited vision, I mined what I could, destroyed all the monsters I could see and hopped into the cave. In the next episode of Cave Exploration, the cave was infested with monsters as per usual. Wow, 112 crit! That's the most damage I've dealt so far. Anyway, from small monsters, to big monsters, to spawners, to medium monster spawners. He had everything. Bright lights, whatever this is. And now my favorite part of this episode. Lava. Yes, I definitely survived. No, I didn't have to make a slower ship and spend 10 minutes sailing. No, never. Back at the cave. I've also mined my first glowing node. And eventually I came to the last part of the cave and activated the monolith. Now it was time to go back to my base. But before I explored this island that was nearby. I'm only mentioning it because I found this unfortunate soul with a bunch of bottles on the island. Yes, a short and sad story. Whatever happened. Moving on. As I go back to my base, I've done the usual chores. I started by taking care of my plants, smelting and upgrading my tools to try and to bake. But I still didn't figure out what ingredients I'm missing to make a stupid muffin. I mean, it clearly says blueberries and wheat. Where's the third ingredient, huh? Come on, bro. Or like this banana bread. It says bananas and wheat, but no cigar. Meanwhile, my bowels were smelting. I decided to go to another adventure and unlock the next monolith for the big cave. As I was sailing to the next location, I stopped at each of the islands I came across just to quickly farm some materials I might need and to see if there are any hidden secrets. As I was exploring one of the unknown islands, I came across this cave. Well, I think I was supposed to find this earlier as there was not much there apart from some useful materials and a bunch of monsters. Okay, this island looks good. Next! I eventually made it to the island with the cave and the monolith inside. As I entered the cave, I started exploring. I went down the bridge which led me to my two most favorite things in the game. Horde of monsters and lava. Yay! They don't stand a chance against my titanium sword. I also have a new ability. I don't know how useful it's going to be, as it's very difficult to actually aim. I ventured further into the cave, mining any resources, glowy thingies, fighting monsters, and I came across this jumping exercise. Easy! I eventually came to the monolith. Yes, I'm full with the essences again. Yes, I told you it's hard to aim the new skill. And yes, you will get overrun by monsters if you don't deal with them. I cleared all the monsters and activated the monolith. I have to say, this was quite pleasant and short case. With all the resources in my backpack, it was time to go back to my base. But not before I gathered some wood. As I was gathering wood on a nearby island, I noticed a tree that was different from the others. And I couldn't believe it. I found olives. That opened so many new doors for me. If I can make oil from the olives as I've tried almost everything. For example, the mining outpost also uses oil to generate more resources. The furnace and the refiner also use oil to boost production. And maybe I can even use it in cooking. And finally make some stupid muffins. I couldn't wait to try. So I got the last of the wood and headed back to my base. I put more materials in the smelter and tried adding olives into the refiner. 
and I was finally making oil. Oh, no, 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 no. JK, JK, JK. For those who are wondering why I'm not using the gardening weapon to harvest plants, it's because I'm an idiot that didn't realize there is a gardening weapon. Yep, sorry. Now for the comparison. Refiner without the oil, and now with the oil. It gives you an insane 5 times production boost. That's amazing. Look at the mining outpost. It's gonna produce 3 times faster. Nice. I continued smelting titanium bars and eventually had enough to upgrade my workbench to level 5. Yes. All I was missing was some dark wood. Wood. Wood? So I went to the closest place I know for dark wood and started chopping. Finally I was able to upgrade to level 5 workbench. And now with the upgrade came new tools and weapons. For example a big bucket for watering plants and a crazy backpack lamp. Wait, does that mean I won't have to hold the torch anymore? Well, I know what I'm building next. I was also a little bit sad that there was no glowing sword or something glowy. But hey. Now with everything upgraded and with the oil hype over, I decided to go explore the big cave I previously unlocked. Knowing there are no more swords I can build, I was ready to go for another dark adventure. I headed for the cave and once I reached the entrance of the cave, I realized I again have a full storage of dark essences. But that wasn't going to stop me. I headed inside. I couldn't repair the bridge from this side and was surprised with the cave inside the cave. Once I entered the cave inside the cave, I was faced with traps that wanted to poke me from the walls. Moving traps where I had to practice my patient skills. I also practiced my jumping skills and lastly, my ability not to catch on fire. Oh, that was close. The last test that I failed was staying alive as I underestimated my enemy. Let's just say I have full storage of darkness essences and I needed to sell them off before continuing the cave. And I did exactly that. Back at the cave I picked up my backpack and continued exploring the darkness. Eventually I came across another fighting arena where I was ambushed and had to defend. Oh no, not the free spinny boys. I'm gonna be smart and pull one by one. Well, one down, two down, three down. Easy. I found a loot room. Yes, please. As I was trying to get the loot on top of the structures, I accidentally opened a hidden chest. Really? All that for for some weed? I came across some more spiky wolves, but I have to say, this moment was pure chaos. Not only I had to watch for the spikes that push you down, I also had to fight monsters. Glad it's over. Oh no, not more lava. I came across this puzzle where I had to press the button, get on a pillar that moves up, jump over the platform to a spiky spiky platform and make it over the fire before the time runs out. Of course it was easy and I made it first try. Also if you fall down here you have to repeat everything. Not me. Great, more lava. Let me activate this just in case I fall down. And I was faced with another arena. How many more? What a fitting name. X stack attack. Haha, <laughs> get wrecked. This fight was hectic, as there was almost no room to run and about six spawners. Anyway, a few seconds later and it wasn't looking so good. But I somehow managed to survive such a battle. But when I was faced with three monsters, I couldn't. Really bro? I thought it was over until I explored the next room. I was wrong. I was only lucky that my sword actually one shot the small ones, because the end result would have been much different. After defeating the last monsters, I was rewarded with a forged hammer. Oh cool, it has a visual effect. Uh, but a small problem. I can't actually use my torch to see, because it's a two-handed weapon. And I don't have a backpack torch yet. Also, I prefer my sword, but anyway. I took these stairs up and reached another cave entrance. Wait, a cave inside a cave, inside a cave. Caveception! You know what time it is? I'll give you two seconds to have a guess. Live reaction time! Ding 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 ding! Asian domes. Okay, uh, so we have a blue door on the left. Let's see what's down. Oh, stairs. Oh, it's the bridge from the entrance. Okay. So that's why... That's our way out then, I guess. Okay, um, let's clear these barrels. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this... Okay, thing. What is this? Um, okay. Oh, and I'm not looking for what, what's behind these doors. I'm really not, to be honest, no. Guess we have to go through. Let's, I'm equipped. Ok, 
Okay, here we go. Wait, I'm going inside the cave again. The caveception is real in this one. Troll in the dungeon. Wait, what? What do you mean troll in the dungeon? Excuse me? I didn't sign up for a troll. Oh no, I see spawners. What? Are you spawning already? Oh no, it's the big boys as well. Can I just... Can I just... Um... Oh no, no you can't, of course. Alright. Okay, let's go down. Is it gonna activate the boss? Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's clear this. Uh, no, not you, spinning boy. Oh, of course you can fit through there. Of course. Of course, I mean. Okay. I hear. I hear. Uh, the steps. No, don't tell me you can fit through there as well. Oh, are you serious? What? How am I gonna do it? We'll just kill this quick. I'm out. Haha, <laughs> we have to go around. <laughs> Good. Don't hit the rocks, bro. Come on. Come on, then. I'm ready. Oh, wow. What? There's more monsters up. On this. Okay. Let me clear this. First. What? How? Oh my god, how many of them? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay, oh God, that was, I thought that was the big boys. Okay, um, how many spawners are there? Oh, this is the big one. Thank God for this titanium sword. That should be all the spawners, right? There should be no more monsters, just. Oh, why? Check myself. Okay, the boss has to go around, so I have some time to play with this. That should be everybody dead, I think. Let me just double check. I'm just gonna double check that. There's what? Where did he come from, huh? Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Ow. Where is the spawner? Where is it? There's no spawner. Where, where did that monster come from, huh? Just roaming? It's just like a one roamer. Yes. What? Another speedy boy. Oh. Fine. I haven't even touched boss yet. Oh yeah. Miss. Miss all my attacks. I don't know how I feel about this forged hammer. It's not the. Oh no. He has visual attack, but the damage of it is not the best. I'll just stick to my sword, I guess. Let me finish this speedy boy. Okay, time to focus on the boss. So he's got a rock attack. Yeah, nice. Miss everything. Wait, what? <laughs> he eated him outside. <laughs> nice one, bro. Nice one. <laughs> uh, laughing on the boss way. I should be focusing on no, not dying, but <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay, um, he's not that strong, to be honest. I don't know what this, this white thing is, but it's not really hurting me. Troll wasn't so hard, wasn't so bad. D 
the other boss was phew, something different. Okay. I think that's it. Let's go out of here. I got talent. Uh, ability cooldown. Ten chance crit. No, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. I wish I had that earlier, but no. Okay. I think that's it. After defeating the boss, I headed inside the Paradise Room, where I looted the blue thingy and warped out of the cave. With 500 gold coins to my name, I went inside the town to upgrade my backpack and focused on more peaceful aspects of the game, like upgrading my town and building the new base. Wow, the next bug upgrade is gonna be rough. I don't even know how to make potions yet. Now with the new base project underway, I started by building farm plots, so I don't have to go to my old island for food. I started small and built 16 farming plots. I then went to my old base and took almost everything that I built there. Wait, why am I losing health? Oh, I'm not gonna show you the whole process of base building, as I've changed base build more times than the weather changes in UK. Oopsie. Anyway, I went from a small cozy cabin to a slightly bigger base, to a double floor over the water extension base. My plan is also to build the base from Darkwood, give it more of a mood, so stay tuned. Anyway, rip my old base. What did I do next? I went to chop down some Darkwood of course, and started upgrading my wood base to Darkwood base. I've also realized I can change the style of my boat. Yay, only if I knew this earlier. I always learn the stuff the hard way, like it would have been 100 times faster if I actually built the base from Darkwood to begin with as now I had to individually click on all the base pieces to change the appearance to Darkwood. And eventually I started building up and finished the roof. The base project was complete. With the 100 days mark quickly creeping in, I had time for 4 more tasks to finish before it's too late. Number 1. I wanted to explore the seas. Number 2. I wasn't happy with how my base looks and I wanted to further customize my base. Number 3. Is to build more bases. Number 4. I wanted to upgrade my town and my backpack. Ok, let's start easy. I first built a backpack torch and went on a sea adventure. I thought with such a big map, there would be some more islands in the mist. Well, that theory was dismissed once I was punished by the gods and this happened. I guess achievement unlocked? Piss of the gods. Eventually I explored all the islands I could without making the upstairs angry. That means first task complete. Now I focused on finishing my base and making it more presentable, I guess. I changed the walls to a more open look and installed a bunch of lights. Hmm, is it lights overkill? Can't wait how this looks at night. Now the second task is also complete. As I was sailing, I came across this structure built on rocks, which gave me an idea to make a lighthouse from rocks. I knew I wasn't going to make more structures, as I was rapidly running out of time, so my third task had to be sort of complete. I'm just gonna start with that I don't know how to build a lighthouse and also I don't know how it's supposed to look and I'm definitely not creative. I was a little disappointed that I couldn't build more floors. Anyway, this was the end result. This looks like a tower, not a lighthouse. Anyway, I continued on with my last remaining tasks. The last couple of days of this journey, I focused on my town and my backpack. The idea was simple. Keep farming plants, sell plants off to the town's people, and don't play blackjack, as it's rigged. But the days kept on coming and I was running out of time. I had to figure out how to make a lot of gold coins in short time and learn how to brew potions I've never even looked at. Easy. I first sold all the dark essences I had and went inside the last cave to farm monsters. I found this place in a cave with three spawners and in short time I was able to farm 400 essences, which means the gold part was almost ready. Now the potion part was a bit tricky. I needed two different potions and I had no clue what recipes they could be. With a lot of trial and error, I eventually made the two potions I needed. I was still missing a little bit of gold, so I went around local islands and gathered some gold and purple plants as they sell for the most. Eventually I had enough of gold and purchased the void pack. Now with the upgraded backpack, I went around the islands and gathered all the materials I need. The only one material I was struggling to find was glass. Which is where my brain cells finally started working and suggested I put limestone into the refinery. Makes sense. And finally, I had all the resources I need to upgrade the town. 
Upon housing the two last citizens, I've unlocked a fish shop and another that provides seeds. Well, I wish I got the fish shop a little bit earlier as I could have made some easy money by catching fish. Well, as my time was coming to an end, I made sure I finished with a good last meal. So I spent the last couple of moments catching the best meal that I would have in this whole hundred days. And I did. I caught the swordfish. I got back to my sweet base and cooked my last meal. I said goodbye to a barrel and my bed. I went upstairs to eat. Wait, what? It gives you 20% more damage. I can't believe this. Anyway, I'm still wondering where the treasure is, as it's definitely not on that island. I've checked. The pirate must have sold me a fake map. And that's all the time I have for this 100 days. First, I want to thank you all for making it this far in the video. If you do enjoy this type of videos, leave a like or a sub and comment down below on what your favorite part was. Also, any feedback is welcome. And I need a new game to play, so hit me up with the recommendations. Guys, have a great rest of your day and bye! Seriously now, the video's finished. Go, go watch something else. Um, why still here? The video's finished. Come on. Fine, enjoy some fishing then.